Hvad lige nu? Jamen, vi kan jo vise, hvordan forholdene er lige her, hvis vi drejer kameraet. We are live on Danish Television, og der kan I se, nu bliver vi, nu bliver vi stoppet med at filme, og det er forholdene her. Mister, you invited the whole world to the, you, you invited the whole world to come here. Why can't we film? It's a public place. Oh my God. Hello everyone, I know by the time of this video this year's World Cup is almost over, but today I want to talk about Qatar and why I and many Swedes are glad that Sweden failed to qualify for this year's World Cup, from a supporter's perspective. Now I'm not gonna go through the complex historical and political history of Qatar. If you want that, I recommend TIFO Football's five part series about Qatar and the events leading up to Qatar hosting the World Cup. I'll leave a link down below. Instead, I'm gonna talk about the previous World Cup tournaments and the double standards surrounding some of the criticism about Qatar, as well the path forward and what course of action we should take concerning this year's World Cup, as well as the standard that must be upheld for hosting future World Cup events and of course other major events like the Olympic Games. Now, I know some of you might think this video may be a waste of time, given that the Qatar World Cup, as of this editing, has reached its end. Given FIFA's history, Qatar is certainly not the first controversial choice of hosting the World Cup. And certainly not the first country with questionable conditions within the host country. But this World Cup country symbolizes a next level of corruption that is alarming. And considering that Saudi Arabia is rumored to be hosting the next World Cup, I think this is important to talk about why Qatar is the most despicable World Cup event yet. As you probably saw at the beginning of the video, journalists have been harassed and approached by Qatar guards. Although in some of these instances, journalists were issued an apology by FIFA and Qatar officials, it really shows how freedom of the press is valued in Qatar. In Qatar, homosexuality is forbidden and can lead up to several years in prison. Before the World Cup, Qatar has claimed that LGBTQ people would be welcome during the World Cup and that they would be able to enjoy the football, though at the same time human rights organizations have reported abuse of LGBTQ people in Qatar. Despite guarantees from FIFA and that people have been issued apologies and in some cases corrections, this place like this has been common in Qatar and there is a genuine concern how much this courtesy would remain now that the World Cup is over. This tournament has been the most expensive World Cup in history, with costs reaching around 220 billion, which beats the hosting cost of Brazil, which was around 11 to 15.6 billion, and Russia, which were around 12 to 14 billion. But the amount of money isn't the only price Qatar has spent to host the World Cup. Before the start of this World Cup, there was an alleged death toll of 6,500 workers. Now, this number don't just include deaths connected with work in stadiums. But it gets really strange when Qatar claims only 37 deaths, three of them work related. Now, the reason why it's strange, it's because, partially because a lot of Qatar's estimate excluded the hundreds of World Cup related projects, partially also because Qatar didn't properly investigate deaths. What makes this even more suspicious is how the head of the, one of the Qatar's leading sport organizations responded to a journalist's report of the living condition of the workers. In addition to this, Qatar claims that reforms and law changes has been made 
to combat these issues. Issues such as workers aren't allowed to change employers and jobs. But there has still been reports from human rights organizations of exploitive actions against workers in a number of areas. Workers themselves have stated that they still have been required to get permission from their current employer before they can move to a new job. And some have experienced retaliation from their employers if they try to leave. For example, cancelling workers' residency permits. When you take all of this in consideration, it makes it harder to accept when uh, representatives of Qatar speak about the progress they made. And it makes it even harder to overlook the price that was paid, especially the human lives that was spent to make this World Cup a reality. The next thing I want to talk about is the fans in this World Cup. The thing about fans of national teams is that the fans usually support a national team that represents the country they're from or they support a second national team because they have family who's from that country. Now, I'm not going to speculate too much about the fans in Qatar who supports another national team. I know for a fact there are Swedes who supported Brazil in the past, despite that they don't have Brazilian background or relatives. So therefore, it's possible that some of these fans are just locals who who just rooting for the national team that's playing just as a regular fan. It's also possible that some of these people are traveling fans, not just from nearby countries like India, but from Europe as well. But there's also possible that there's paid fans in the mix. It therefore seems really crooked and arranged, and given Qatar's reputation, the sentiment isn't exactly unfounded. The last thing that makes me glad that Sweden isn't part of the World Cup this year is the corruption that has plagued it. The way the host country was chosen in the past was through a number of executives. Jack Warner was one of them. Supposedly there was a leaked email that revealed among other things bank records before the vote for the World Cup 2022 in 2010 from the executive member from Qatar in Hammam, which showed that he deposited around 1.6 million directly to Warner's account. Members of Qatar bid team deny any involvement in any improper conduct and that they had no knowledge of any payment being made. Many executive members were either kicked out, suspended or were forced to leave FIFA in disgrace. Furthermore, business deals was used to sway nations into voting for Qatar's bid. For example, Thailand and Qatar were at a meeting renegotiating an energy deal. Thailand's executive committee member was at this meeting. There's a lot to cover regarding the corruption connected to Qatar World Cup, but this is basically how the World Cup was put in Qatar. Why? Football is a popular sport around the globe, which means money and power, both of which serves FIFA in Qatar well. This is why FIFA ignored its own evaluation on Qatar, which stated risk about the country hosting the event. Money talks. At this point in the video, I know some people are going to rush to the conversation to scream about the hypocrisy surrounding the criticism of Al Qatar. And you know what? I agree. To some extent, at least. There is definitely some bias towards Qatar because it's a Muslim country. And people have definitely turned a blind eye with human rights violation in other World Cup events all while football matches was being played at the stadiums. But to claim that Qatar has only been talked about now, with the World Cup playing in Qatar, would be misleading and ignorant. Most people have been talking about Qatar since the moment Qatar World Cup was announced, and the talk about the problem with FIFA has been going on long before that. Furthermore, 
I don't doubt that parts of the football community only criticise Qatar in order to make themselves look good. But that should not and cannot be an excuse to shut down the conversation about Qatar. And most importantly, FIFA. Qatar is certainly an eye-opener. As we discussed before in this video, Qatar is not the first controversial choice of hosting the World Cup, and I suspect it won't be the last. Although it's important to criticize and pressure Qatar to achieve change, it'd be foolish to only focusing on Qatar. Qatar is certainly part of the problem, but it isn't the whole problem. FIFA is the problem. Also, focusing solely on famous people watching Qatar and fans watching Qatar is just as foolish as solely focusing on Qatar itself. But it, because it's not their fault. They are not the one we should blame. FIFA is. FIFA corruption is causing all of this. Therefore, the aim of the conversation must be directed at FIFA, not the Qatari, not the players, not the fans. So the question lies before us. Us fans need to demand our respective football association to take a stand against FIFA. Obviously a country cannot be 100% but FIFA's own regulation demand a change. The way we choose a host country for any event must change from scratch. The share of money usually falls to FIFA, given that the taxpayers foot the bill in hosting the World Cup, this must change. Now these things may be easier said than done, but they are important things to do. Now again, these things may be hard to accomplish. And I'm not saying I alone have all the answers to accomplish these things. So let's have the conversation. Look at these proposals and let's discuss what the first step is to make these things happen. Leave a comment down below and tell us what you propose. So. Thank you for watching everyone, keep your eyes open for our podcast, it will be out soon on Spotify etc. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and of course don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And we'll see you in our next video.